Hello everyone and thank you for joining me here with this video which is a continuation of the steel structures video started uh, earlier on. I appreciate that you're here for it. You could have been anywhere else you've chosen to be here. Thank you so much and let's get started. Great. Um, so what we're chatting about today is uh, steel connections. And uh, if you remember from the analogy that we had previously about what the structure is in a building, uh, which is basically the muscle, the bones and the tendons of that building, connections refer to the tendons. That is, they connect, they glue together the muscles and bones, or I guess the steel structural elements to ensure they work together. Okay? You can find more about this also in chapter 19 of our textbook. Connections are simple in concept, right? They just attach two structural steel elements, but they're difficult to properly design and execute. So it's not surprising, I guess, that uh, it's common that the source of many structural failures is at the location of the connections. I'm showing you here the two different types of steel connections we'll go over. On the left hand side, you can see an example of a well uh, bolted connection taken from our very own ACE building. On the right hand side, you can see an example of a welded connection, okay? And the idea behind a bolted connection is that you're basically using a bolt, like the one you see on screen, to fasten two pieces of steel together, okay? And the way it usually works is actually you have two pieces of steel, you put a plate at the end of it, you overlap the plates, and then you pass a bolt between the two or multiple bolts between the two, okay? With welding, it's actually different. You use uh, heat, chemicals, or electricity, or other forms to basically fuse two pieces of metal together, steel together, or to fuse a glue between them, okay? Uh, there is a third type, which I'm just bringing up in the interest of historical relevance, and that's rivets. Rivets are no longer in use, really, when it comes to uh, steel construction, connections in steel construction, but they were used quite a bit. Rivets are really cool because they come out hot and moldable, okay? Uh, but we're not going to cover them. However, I'm going to link for you below an interesting, simple, awesome rocking video that will show you how rivets are done, okay? Now, bolts. Let's talk about that for a second. Uh, bolts come in different forms. You have the common bolts, and they're labeled as A307. They're common, not because you find them often, but because there's nothing special, structurally speaking, strength-wise, to them, okay? They're not used as often, or at least they shouldn't be for proper structural connections. More appropriate, more appropriate bolts are the high strength bolts. They are either the ones that are labeled as A325 or A490. More details in chapter 19 of your book. A325 are the ones that are most commonly used. And these are uh, both A325 and A490 high strength bolts. They're appropriate for structural connections. When you then use then bolts to connect elements, you have to punch or drill holes for the bolts to fit through, right? Otherwise, you can't get the bolts through. And I'm making you aware of this so that you know that bolts aren't simply punched or drilled at any dimension. They have to be within very specific tolerances depending on the specific type of connection. You can even see on the screen on the bottom right, there's examples of slotted connection. That is a hole that's actually kind of oval that allows for two elements to slide with respect to each other, okay? All right, how do you fasten bolts? There are two main ways, and that's two different ways of designing the engineering aspect of bolt connection. The first one is snug fit, and that's basically where you take a wrench and you fasten the bolts, okay? And you do that until they're all tightened. The second one is by slip critical, and that is you're actually using a torque to torque the bolts to a specific amount so you get friction holding that uh, connection together, okay? When it comes to welded connection, 
there aren't just two types. There are many different types of welds that you can install. I'm showing two here, but there are so many. And as you can see, uh, welding is beautiful, right? It's an art, it's a science. Um, so welding can happen with a whole bunch of different ways. And this course and this video is not about welding. Uh, there's not enough time to talk about the different kinds of welds that you can set up and you're not meant to become experts at that. But just to give an understanding, there are programs, apprenticeship programs that are just about welding because there's so much to know about welding and how to do it properly. Okay. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to provide you with a link at the bottom of an interesting quick video. I think it's beneath below uh, five minutes. Uh, about an introductory explanation about how welding works, okay? But it's basically taking two steel pieces together and gluing them together, okay? All right. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about when it comes to welds, <clears throat> excuse me, is this. This is how welds are shown on drawings, okay? So you can see there is a 45 degree arrow that points at the location of the weld. That's always at 45 degrees. Well, typically, right? But never say never. And then there's a horizontal portion of that label where you actually write uh, about the weld and you put a descriptive symbol of the weld. I'm making you aware of this, right? Because there is a whole bunch of different kinds of welds that you can have. But again, you are not meant to become experts at welds only to know about them what their purpose is, and how they're shown on drawings. More about this when we do some of our sketches, okay? All right, let's look at welds versus bolts. Connections, advantages of one over the other. Let's start with welding connections and some of the advantages of having welded connections versus bolted connections. There's a much larger range of application. That is, you can weld two elements together that cannot be bolted together. This, for example, happens when you're trying to connect, say, a beam to an HSS column. Okay, more on this when we talk about bolts. Uh, the other thing, too, is when you put welds, you basically don't have to use bolts and gusset plates, right? If you're bolting two elements together, you can't just overlap them and bolt them. You have to take those two elements, put a plate at the end of them, and then you overlap the plates, and these get bolted, okay? That doesn't happen with welds. With welds, you can simply take two elements and weld them together. Uh, the other thing too is that welds, if done properly, when done properly, typically transfer forces in those two connected elements better than bolting. Okay? Some of the limitations. Welds are beautiful and take lots of skill to do. Okay? So you need somebody with a lot more uh, practice and experience to do weld properly. So that also means that welds work better when they're done under controlled conditions, like indoors in a shop. They don't work as well when you're working outdoors or under bad weather conditions, like say winter in Ottawa. Furthermore, when you're connecting two elements by welds, the location of the welds between the elements needs to be cleaned, dried, sometimes greased, right, prepped. And that doesn't happen with bolts. All of this basically translates into the fact that welded connections are much more expensive and typically need to be avoided. Sorry, not need to, but are typically avoided because they increase the price of a building quite a bit. They can't be avoided 100%, but you usually tend to go with bolted connections versus welded connection, given the choice, right? Okay, bolted connections. Let's look at some of the advantages of bolted connections. They're fast. You don't need a skilled laborer to do it, right? You don't need the training. You don't have to prepare the surface where you're bolting connections. You're bolting elements together. And it works fine under many, many uh, conditions, site conditions, raining, snowing, uh, hailing, right? Which doesn't work well for welds. But in terms of limitations, what's the deal with bolts or bolted connections? Well, your plates, the holes in those plates of the members that need to be fastened together, they have to be properly designed and built and assembled off-site, right? The plates that you need to put at the end of members that are then 
bolted together. Furthermore, certain elements cannot be bolted together. And by that I mean HSS, right? HSS are hollow inside and you can't bolt into them because you can't reach inside an HSS to then fasten the end of that bolt. Okay. Okay, according to the American Institute of Steel Construction, AISC, <clears throat> column beam connections can be classified under the following three categories. You have simple connections, rigid connections, and semi-rigid connections. Simple connections are also known as type two connections, and they're there to transfer shear. That is the typical, the kind of vertical force that's trying to shear off a beam from a column. The same shear that allows you to rip a piece of paper when you move it vertically one side from the other. Rigid connections, also known as type one connections, are there to transfer moments between a beam and a column. Moments are those forces in a beam that try to get that beam to smile or frown. So to be fair, it's not a, it's not a force, right? By definition, a moment is not a force. It's that action on a beam that tries to bend it, right? It tries to get the end of the beam to bend, to rotate, okay? That's why a smile or a frown. And if the connection is rigid, then that rotation happens with the column as well. It's transferred to the column. Finally, we have type three connections, so-called semi-rigid. And these are <coughs> connections that uh, recognize that you can't really just have a simple connection or a rigid connection, and that all connections actually are somewhere in between, between rigid and simple. <coughs> Excuse me. The um, semi-rigid connections are a bit more difficult to design properly, but they're gaining more traction. Uh, but in practice though, most connections, when they're designed for steel construction, they're either considered simple or rigid. It makes it a bit more convenient to design and then build. So just a reminder then of shear and bending, okay? When you get shear and bending, when you have a force applied on a beam, the impact on the beam that tries to get that beam to resist rotation, so smiling and bending, uh, smiling and frowning is bending. Shear is then the impact on the beam that tries to get the beam to rip apart, okay? All right, so let's look at some type of beam to column connection. Let's start with type two connections, which are shear connections. Here you have an example of a beam and a column connected to each other. It's a bolted connection, as you can see. The angle that you see right here is used to fasten the column to the beam. The angle has been welded to the beam and then it's been bolted to the column. And typically, when you have a beam whose web is connected to a column, you know that that's a shear connection, a type two connection. Here are some other examples of type two connections, okay, where the web is connected to the column, the web of the beam. Except for this one here, this seated shear connection is the one example where the web is not connected to the column, the web of the beam, it's the top and bottom flange, but that specific detail of the top and bottom flange connection by way of an angle makes that a shear connection because it behaves the same, okay? And again, typically when you have the web of a beam connected to a column, only the web of a beam, that's a shear connection, a type two connection. Here you have a connection between two beams or two beam type elements. You have a girder and a beam framed into it. Again, you can see that the web of that beam is fastened to the girder. That makes it a type two connection because the web transfers shear in beams. Here's an example of a beam fastened into a main girder. And I bring this up because it's a continuation of the one we just saw. Uh, but I also want to point out the coping. You see this cutting out of the beams where it connects to the girder. It's done so that you can connect directly to the web and the top is all one level. So you can put a floor on top of that, okay? Uh, so again, that's called a coped end or the coping at the end of a beam. You cut out, okay? <clears throat> 
Um, here's a type 1 type of connection, that is a rigid connection between a beam and a column. It looks very similar to a type 2, but here's the main difference. Not only is the web of the beam connected to the column, also the flanges are. So look at this. The web here is fastened between the beam and the column, but also the flanges at the top and bottom have been connected to the column. That's the main difference. That way, now that end of that beam is clamped to the column. It cannot freely rotate, right? Whereas before it could have. So here's an example where I put a rigid connection, okay? Hopefully this kind of brings it into place. Notice how the flange of that beam has been bolted to the column. Uh, sorry. The web of that beam has been bolted into the column, and then the top and bottom flanges are then welded to the column. So that, that end of that column is clamped on to that, uh, the end of that beam is clamped onto that column and it can't rotate, okay? That's a full rigid connection. All right, here's another example of a rigid connection where you have, uh, plates that are welded to the top flanges and then welded to the beam, okay, or even bolted as you see here. Again, when the web and flange of a beam are fastened to a column, it's a rigid connection. It's clamped to that column. Um, next, I want to chat about, I guess, column splices. So that is you attach a piece of a column to another piece of a column. You have to use these because when you're building tall steel structures, and by this I mean two or more stories, well, you have to recognize that those column members, they're not infinite in length. They only come in such lengths that you can transport, right? So when you put them up, in order to get the multi-story building, you have to put them on top of each other, right? And that means you have to fasten them properly by way of splices. So in this case, you can see examples of different kinds of splices. Typically, the length of each solid piece of steel column is about two stories, maybe a little more than two stories, okay? Uh, you don't want it more than that because you cannot make it properly into good quality, and it's very hard to transport economically. So here's an example of a column splice in our very own ACE building. You can see two W sections that have been put close together, right? And then the webs and the B and the flanges of those sections have been bolted together. Here's another example where there are two W sections of different sizes that have been fastened together by way of plates at their ends. The plates have been welded to the ends as caps of those W sections, and then the plates have been fastened, okay? All right, now the other item that I'm gonna discuss in a separate video is gonna be erection of steel structures and stability of steel structures, and then a separate video also about our assignment number one. Again, I wanna thank you so much for your time. I appreciate that you were here for it, and stay tuned, I'm gonna link the other videos at the bottom. Thank you so much.